So, welcome back, guys. It's William Bootsy Blandon. Good news. Good news. Um, apparently, my experiment worked. Glenn is right. Glenn and Cameron, you're right. Sometimes you got to run experiments just to see how things go. But apparently, Glenn and Cameron is not the only one that's good on Craigslist. I put together a simple ad on Craigslist and it blew up. Rent, trying to rent the room. Just an experiment. I put an ad just to see, you know, how many people will be interested in renting the spare bedroom I got. Um, as well as possibly renting a car. Nobody's really interested in the car. Um, everybody wants to rent the room. And I said, weed friendly in the ad. And I think that's why I'm getting so many people interested. Um, for, I did that for two reasons. I said weed friendly because I didn't want anybody to move in my place and, and be one of those health nuts that, you know, they get bent out of shape when somebody's smoking weed in the house and all this other stuff. I didn't want that. And I knew that by doing that, I would get somebody else that also has weed. Therefore, I don't have to always go buy it. That was another reason. And it worked. This young lady that I, so far, I checked out one guy and one young lady. I didn't even meet the guy because he was talking about money problems. So, another Spanish young lady um, happens happens to be interested in women, which I don't care. I'm taking men or women on this deal. So, um, Craigslist is very funny about if you try to structure the ad where it, it uh, discriminates in any sort of way. Um, and I don't discriminate. So I didn't have no problem with, uh, you know, her being involved with women. It didn't bother me at all. Uh, matter of fact, I think I like it because, um, you know, I think I can relate better to a chick that acts like a dude, honestly. But... I was amazed at the high response rate, guys. Just got pulled in my driveway. I got such a high response rate from this friggin' ad. It's ridiculous. I put this ad up literally the same day I started getting responses, like an hour after submitting the ad on Craigslist. Um, and I think the title is what got him. Glenn is right. Titles matter. What you say in the ad matters. I got like five people that night. And when I woke up this morning, I think two other people were interested. So, a brother got options in this economy. That tells me the recession is definitely coming. The recession is definitely coming, guys. Um, but I got to be careful. Um, what do I do? Do I really rent the room? I'm thinking I really rent the room. Um, and the girl agreed to pay weekly. So I even got, by knocking off $100, I told him I would, I was, I'm charging $800 for the room, which is a little bit higher, a little bit high for just a room in my area. Um, uh, I think rooms probably go closer to what? No, you can get 800 in, Connecticut, in most places in Connecticut for a room. So I'm charging eight, but I'm telling them if they pay weekly payments and break it up, I will knock off a hundred bucks. So, and then everybody's saying my response rate is pretty good because normally when people put ads on Craigslist, they never respond back. You ever notice that? When you get an ad on Craigslist for a partner or anything, they do not respond back quickly. I just know, happen to notice that. And they everybody's saying, I'm responding. I'm, one dude was like, I'm just glad you responded. Like, he was that amazed. So, right now, I'm thinking about this one girl, but I got like three other people I could check out. 
and I'm going for the one with the highest, what I perceive as the highest paycheck. And I could vibe with somebody I could chill, then I could learn if I'm smoking weed or not, something like that. But um, I was really shocked at putting this ad up and saying little phrases like weed friendly would get such a high, I'm giving away my secret too. Just putting weed friendly in your ad. Now you might, you gotta be careful with the weed friendly comments depending on where you are. Because had I put weed friendly in say Bridgeport, Connecticut, I would've got the wrong type of crowd. I got more of the Jamaican guys and I'm, I'm doing this in like the Bristol, New Britain area. So it's more predominantly Spanish speaking. Either Puerto Rican, you know, Dominican, you know, a little bit mixture. So you got to be careful depending on, because everybody thinks Connecticut is so soft, but there are some hard, bad areas in Connecticut. And here's what I noticed, guys. People from New York are coming to Connecticut. So even if you thought Connecticut was quote unquote soft, there's some hard people coming. Um, two of the people I already talked to are from New York. One happens to be an older dude, and I like that fact, but he was broke. I didn't like the fact that he's struggling. He was 45 years old, and he was saying he was struggling. Meanwhile, the girl was had it where she had she was working at fast food but she has such a good relationship with her boss anytime she needs some emergency money she can get it from her boss I like that I really do like that um, so she essentially she could take out a loan from her job just to pay me if needed and she had all the money I required up front because I required the $600 for the first month up front. She already got it. The only reason why I didn't want to just jump in and say, yeah, yeah, you got it. It's for you. I want to feel out the other people. So I got two, two more people I want to feel out. I still did not get my car hood checked. Um, I got the 20, for people that haven't watched all the videos, I got a 2017 Ford Fiesta for Uber. Um, the only thing wrong with that, the only thing, the two things I didn't like. It looked like they detailed the cars and then they let them sit for like weeks. So it looked like the car was cleaned at one point, but like there was a moth, a dead moth in the back. And I think they cleaned them once and just let them sit in the parking lot somewhere. And it was like shit on the windows, like, so I know they didn't detail the day they dropped it off. And then this car thing that's under warranty. But I got to put in a claim for it with my insurance. Or not the insurance, with my warranty. Uh, because I can't get the Ford dealerships to put in an appointment even the same week, guys. The Ford dealerships, you cannot get an appointment even in the same week. So I got an appointment with Pep Boys, which is in their network. I got an appointment tomorrow, actually. I'm going to get it looked at. It's not really a big issue, but it bothers me. You know, I don't like to see lights, guys. I'm one of them dudes, like, if my dashboard is lit up in any way, it bothers me. So... It's just showing the hood is open, but it's not actually open. It's latched. I'm checking it. Um, but it still bothers me seeing that light. I don't want to see any unnecessary lights on my dashboard. So I want to get that corrected before I can feel comfortable just going out and drive as much as I want. You know, so I'm losing money. But at the same time, I can make money if I rent this room. So now I'm, at, I'm back in the corner where I'm feeling like, yeah, maybe I should rent the room. Um, and then I'm going to do a separate ad for the car alone and see how that pans out. But the experiment works. Sometimes you got to try things, do different experiments just to see how they play out. 
and this experiment pretty played out pretty well um because you're looking at almost what three-fourths of my rent from renting the room my rent is 1100 um, this person will be paying seven to eight hundred dollars eight hundred dollars the first month and then after that she could pay weekly or monthly but experiments you gotta try some stuff out you know this is what we're gonna be talking about on the channel you gotta try some stuff out and originally I was really not gonna rent the room I was feeling comfortable in my situation where I do I really want to rent this room? I kind of like getting out the shower naked and such and such. But after the experience today, meeting one of the uh, potential renters, and they already got it where they're fine with the weekly, and they're also fine with the uh, keeping it low key. Now, I don't want to hide stuff from my landlord, but I also know that she's going to want me to renew my lease she's gonna want a new deposit unnecessarily um maybe down the line i'll be willing to do that where i'll tell her just write me a new lease and let me sub lease to people that's what i really ultimately want to do i want to be able to just go out rent apartments and sublease them like a airbnb almost situation but you gotta you gotta try some stuff out. It, it, being an entrepreneur, you're gonna have to try some things out. Everything's not gonna always work out. Like I couldn't even get my damn hood checked today. Um, it just didn't work out, you know. But you know, I, I never give up. In a sense, I always keep trying new things, trying new things. Sometimes they pan out, sometimes they don't. But I will say for every failed experience I have for every five failed experience I have one good one and that's in everything I do so I keep trying to get that one and um, so far that theory has worked this year keep trying you're gonna get some failures but when you get that one positive thing to pan out whether it be business or personal it's usually a really big one Thank you guys for your continued support. Um, links are in the description below. Subscribe, like, comment, click that bell icon, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.